Hello everybody, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy. Today our expert trainer will be discussing about AWS organization. So let's get into the video. AWS organization. Now this one is very interesting. Now what has happened over the period of time, like suppose say there was a company which has a branch in US, India and France. These were the three countries where the company was having their branch locations. And locally they have procured some AWS services. Locally they have procured some AWS services. Now, as the usage of cloud in the organization increased, the company realized that there are multiple root accounts for the single organization in various countries. So what they decided, they decided to bring all these root accounts under a single umbrella so that the control policies can be created centrally for the whole organization, which will be pushed to all the root accounts in that particular organization. So they wanted to bring multiple root accounts if they exist for an organization to come under a single umbrella so that the security policies can be centrally managed by the company. That was a need which came up to AWS and thus Amazon came up with a solution called AWS organizations. In this, if you have got multiple AWS accounts and, and here we are talking about the root accounts. Okay, if you have got multiple AWS accounts and you want to manage all of them together, then AWS organization is a global service which help you to achieve that. You can create a central management account and can invite the root accounts to join your organization. Once the root ac the accounts become the part of the organization, you can have a consolidated billing console for all the accounts where organization wise segregation can be seen, but centrally all the bills can be managed. They can be paid. And now because you are doing volume business with AWS and thus you can get the volume discount also from AWS because you all are part of a single organization. So those volume discounts can be procured or they can be captured by the organization. If you are purchasing any saving plan or any reserved instances from Amazon. Now these are what? These are basically specialized EC2 instances which you can purchase from Amazon which are booked well in advance. And whenever you do advance booking for any service, you are very well aware that you get discounts on it. So if you are doing any advance booking for Amazon EC2 service, it can be shared across multiple root accounts if they are member of a single organization. So this is how the whole structure helps you. The API is available to automate this account creation and addition. So this is your AWS organizations. So this will be a view. So there will be a root organization unit OU. And this root OU can have multiple OUs to become part of it. And in this multiple OUs, you can have root accounts added. Like this prod OU has got another organizational unit which has got these two root accounts. These are member accounts. There is a finance organization unit and has got these two root accounts. Similarly, the production organization unit was anyways having these two accounts inside it. So like that multiple root accounts can become member of a single organization 
so that these things can be centrally shared and managed this is what the advantage of aws organization is multiple accounts versus one account with multiple vpcs use standard tags centralized ones when you are part of a single organization for billing purpose it becomes easy for you to understand your bill if you enable the cloud trail on organization or uh, all the accounts of the organization then centrally log management can be done so central log management can be done and the most useful advantage is the scps service control policy you can create a service control policy for your organization now what does a service control policy is service control policy is actually just like the permission boundary which we have created for a user when we used to create a user i have given you an option when you used to create a user there was an option that i can create a permission boundary and i can say that at a maximum what permissions this user can get so i created a boundary ec2 read only s3 full access on rds read only these three permissions i have given in the permission boundary of the user that doesn't means that the user has got ec2 read only s3 full access or rds read only it doesn't means that <clears throat> when you have created the permission boundary that means if you allocate any policy to this user either directly or via the group group at a maximum what permissions can be allocated to this user the user will not be able to cross this boundary created by you so that was a permission boundary for a single user similarly you can have a permission boundary for your organization where you want that whatever you do inside the organization you will never be able to create a public bucket the bucket is only the whole bucket cannot be made public you will be either required to create the objects and give them policies so that they can be accessible by multiple people but you cannot enable the public access on the bucket itself like we created a policy where all the objects which are there inside my bucket can be will be public by default so that is denied at the organization level so what will happen even if on the bucket you create a policy with public access then that will not be implemented because in the scp service control policy you have denied it so it will create the policies which will restrict the users and the roles or the services to be able to do maximum what so it is a kind of permission boundary for the whole organization what will they be able to do at a maximum so you will not be actually creating a policy that this user will be able to do this or this user will be able to do that user based policies will not be created it will be a policy for the organization all the users or roles in the organization can at a maximum do this 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 and this they cannot go beyond that so you can create a policy for the whole organization in scp service control policy so if you understand the hierarchy of a service control policy then you can have you can understand like it like this like this is your root ou and this is your prod ou prod ou has got account a and has got two organizational units again member of it one is hr and another is finance in hr 
there is one user account b and in finance there is account c so we basically have got three accounts now what these three accounts will be able to do account a will be able to do anything except what except the service control policy created by the organizational unit so the organizational unit prod has a organization policy deny the red shift access so it can do anything except the red shift access it cannot do the red shift access that is an organizational scp created talking about account b account b can do anything except because he is member of prod and hr so prod is denying red shift hr is denying lambda apart from that account b will be able to do everything okay then account c it can do anything except because this for finance ou do not have any scp associated so the only scp which will come in picture is prod scp and root scp now prod has a restriction of red shift deny but root scp has a full access so except red shift everything can be done by this account c if proper permissions are given to it so like this we can create the boundaries this is a management account we can create a service control policy for the account itself which not which will not be applicable to the root ous or oh, sorry which will not be applicable to the child ous this service control policy is specifically created for the management account because your root organizational unit has got a full access service control policy so the members can do the control at their level so we created a child ou production which was having a root account so in production ou i was having a deny red shift policy so root with on my account a i can do anything except accessing the red shift even if i allow red shift on this account still i won't be able to access it because at the organization scp i have denied it so organization scps takes a priority over the account scp and the parent organization scp takes a priority over the child organizational unit service control policy so if you deny something here and if you allow it here it won't work similarly if you deny something here and you allow something in this scp it won't work if something is denied here then it will be denied for all the root accounts inside this ou scp stands for service control policy so like this you can create the policies okay so guys this was our expert from team k21 academy and if in case you missed upon any concept or if you want to dive deeper into the concepts then we have something really special for you we have our free class on amazon aws solution architect certification for beginners under this free class you'll be learning about why and who should learn aws cloud services deployment models and aws services as well and the most important part is you'll be getting hands-on labs job opportunities along with docker and kubernetes in aws and amazing amazing stuff so if you want to register for this free class all you have to do is just log on to your browser and type k21academy.com forward slash aws sa02 and after that you'll be seeing this kind of interface you just have to click on book your free seat now select your event date add your name your email address your phone number and click on yes save my seat and after that you'll be seeing this kind of page you just have to save this link on the extreme right add it to your calendars and i'll see you in the free class till then keep learning